Howdy folks, Dread Shells here, and welcome back to another World of Tanks video. Um, I'm going to be continuing my series that I have over the last couple of videos of looking at scout games on the map Ghost Town to help give some variety to the channel of one, the maps that uh, people don't normally traditionally think of as having potential for a scout, and second, trying to break up the monotony of having so many wheelie EBR games posted on the uh, on the channel <laughs> over the last few months. So uh, today we're going to be looking at a game in the ELC Even 90. This is a, a Tier 8 French Premium Scout Tank. Um, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with it. Um, there's several of you I know who follow my channel who are really excited about it. Um, in fact, um, there is a notable content creator named Nick Shocks who is um, uh, interested in this particular tank and he said he'd like to see uh, videos posted of this on my channel. So um, if you guys don't know him, I'm going to put a link of him in the video here and in the channel down below. He's a, he streams regularly on Twitch. He's a really good content creator, fun channel to hang out with. And uh, I definitely recommend go checking him out. Uh, but back to the game here. So the first thing that is noteworthy in the matchmaking here is that we are top tier, which is really nice. So um, basically whenever you have um, calculating what kind of responsibility uh, you are, are expected responsibility that you will have in the battle of either spotting or damage or both and how much impact you're going to have on the outcome of the battle, win or loss. Um, how high you are in the tiering of the matchmaking is really important to, to decide that. Of course, the goal is to try to win no matter what, what um, tiering you are in the matchmaking, but... Um, the higher you are, generally the more powerful and influential tank you have, so you need to be aware of that. Um, so, I'm sure most of you guys are familiar with the attributes of the EVEN 90 in general. Um, it has a three-shot autoloader. The pen is not very good. Um, I'm trying to remember what it is off the top of my head. Like, one something uh, standard. Well, maybe we'll have to start the battle here to... Just to see it, because I my memory is very potato. Nope, it's going to uh, going to fail me. But I'll post the stats down below. Um, uh, I don't have a very good memory on the specifics of stats, but uh, but yeah. So anyway, the um, the AP penetration isn't awesome, so you're going to be bouncing a lot of shots uh, generally when you you're shooting your AP rounds. Um, but that isn't exclusively down to the penetration of the tank. The um, the main issue with the AP rounds on the standard ammo, the ELC even 90, is the slow shell velocity. So it takes a really long time for the the shell to reach the target, and generally it's not going to be as accurately hitting where you're aiming um, as the APCR ammo. So I carry a 50/50 loadout. And a clip of HE in this tank, believe it or not, because I have never ever run out of ammo in the ELC even 90, not even close. Um, mainly because the reload time is very long on this tank. I, my reload time for my clip is around 27 seconds. Um, the the other thing that makes it really hard to to reach your maximum clip potential is that you have a really really long aim time. Uh, on this tank. I have a really, really good crew in this tank, and it's still really hard. Um, we can talk about equipment loadouts after the battle, but uh, let's just get started here. Go back into my normal cam here. Alright, so just like in the previous two battles, um, we're in the configuration on the map where the spawns are north and south, quote-unquote. Where this row of bushes here on the left comes into play as far as vision is concerned. Now, tactically, I'm actually making... I'm going to make a really big misplay here. You'll see that I have no one behind me to shoot whatever I potentially spot except the Scorpion and maybe the Pershing. But they're, they're right on the city edge, right? Um, they're right on the city edge right behind me, yeah? 
so they but like they'll have angles of fire on anything that's over here right but anything i spot right here or here they will have a really hard time um um shooting but that's not the main reason that this is a tactical misplay um with how aggressive i'm being right it's not wrong for me to be on this side of the map it's kind of it's kind of um, a misplay to be for me to be moving up as aggressively as I am. Um, if you see in the matchmaking, oh, well, let me adjust the T list so you can see the actual tanks. If you see on the team list here, there's three scouts on the enemy team, right? And I moved up this aggressively at the beginning of a game um, without knowing where the scouts were already. So this is a really, really big risk and technically a no-no. Um, it's willing, it's usually okay to try to take this risk. It, it's totally up to you. If you have a lot of firepower directly behind you, you can increase the odds that you'll survive, right? But I don't have a lot of firepower. So, um, basically rolling the dice here to, uh, to try to get a good game. So just to make you guys aware of that mis misplay on my part. And just like in the previous uh, EBR game that I showed you guys of uh, how this bush line works here for spotting left and right, but that of course was from the other spawn on encounter, it works exactly the same way. So luckily for us, the T92 is not in this bush line. He's over there on the edge of the map. So we spot him really. No need for us to shoot him. The really nice thing about keeping a target perma spotted in, a, in an area like this where there's a lot of um, soft cover is that he pulled back down, waited for a long time, right? And then he pulled back up thinking that he had waited long enough for him to go unspotted, but I kept him spotted the whole time, right? So that is a nice thing to do if you can put yourself into a situation when you're passive scouting and the ELC even 90 is king of passive scouting. Of scout, uh, passive scouting. It has uh, has awesome camo rating and it has uh, really good view range. Um, the the thing that lets it down um, as far as passive scouting is its mobility isn't great. Um, so it uh, getting into p position in time to spot targets promptly is a little bit of an issue for the tank. But other than that, it's a really good passive scouter. No need for me to shoot yet. Um, so whenever you're passive scouting there, you have a lot of time on your hands, right? Because you're not directly engaging targets. There we go. We spot us during a meal, moved up a little bit here. You can see how the bush line works. See how it does a little curve here. So you need to move up a little bit if you want to try and spot targets there directly in front of you on that particular knoll. Um, you can also spot targets that are sitting here in this bush. This is a pretty common bush back here in this uh, far left corner back here. Far left as it is to me. That's in K0. Um, usually though, just a heads up, you guys cannot spot tanks in these bushes unless they fire. And they won't be firing um, unless tanks here are spotted or um, if like your team has moved up to here. Generally, so you can spot tanks here. It's just a, a little bit tricky to do it. Um, another thing here is that you can spot tanks right here if you move far up, far enough up in this bush line as well. So um, I think that's it. Let's keep going. But like I was saying earlier, so you have a lot of time on your hands when you're passive scouting, right? So um, you, you need to be observing the tactical situation, not just in the area around you, but on the minimap as a whole. And I'm making a movement right here. I was about to stop and explain what I can do it on the move. The, if you see on the one, two lines on the minimap, the, uh, entire that side of the map has died and has fallen. So I feel like I need to, I need to, p um, push the tempo of the battle over on my side of the map or... And we can't just stay passive, otherwise eventually the enemy will keep cascading everything around us and we'll get encapsulated and we'll lose the game, right? So I feel like if our team as a whole are going to win this win this battle, we need to win this, uh, this engagement here. Now you notice that I spotted, or the Pershing spotted the T29 over here to my left, right? 
as he fired um, as he fired at us as we were advancing here on the T92. I'm going for the Stura Emil instead of the T29 because my clip potential is not very high. Um, I think it's 220 times, so it's like 660 damage, right? So there's no reason for me to do that kind of damage to the T29 if I we can't take his gun out of the fight quickly. The Pershing's already lost a decent number of his hit points, so I'd rather take out the lower health stir meal, and that's why I'm advancing on him instead of the T29. And he doesn't even react. I'm not sure why. Maybe he just gave up. We actually spotted already behind us there, over there on the K4 perch. So now I am, at, for the same reason I was pushing the tempo earlier against the T92, um, I am pushing the tempo against this T29. I actually do not care about getting shot right here. This is what, um, this is what trading HP for position looks like. Sometimes you have to do it. A lot of the times people are really afraid about, about losing hit points. And you shouldn't be reckless and, and not care about getting shot. Um, and you should you should definitely um, you should definitely um, think about it how you're doing it. But there's definitely situations where you should be willing to trade hit points to kill a tank and get a position on the map. And now we're on a really good position. Me and this Pershing here, we've evened up the scoreboard, and we've and we've if you look at the mini map, we've evened up the positioning here. So. Now we are mirroring what the enemy team is doing to us, at least. So before we were losing, and now at least we're kind of even. Although I think we're probably down on hit points, if I remember correctly. So, so a, a pretty tricky shot to hit, hit here in the even 90. It's not a very accurate gun. For first shot, I tried to aim at his lower plate. Um... But then he turned his turret towards the tanks that my teammates that were in the city, so I had the side of his turret, so that made the shot easier. Working on spotting some tanks here just to see what they have up there on the perch, and I got a Pershing here in support with me. The Artie dies, so that's awesome. A Scorpion is tracked, so I'm going to put some blind shots into him. I think I see the shell loop passed over the top of the hill, so I was thinking maybe the scorpion had repaired. That's why I didn't bother to uh, to um, to pump the rest of my clip into that unspotted location where the scorpion last was. So right now I am playing a... Um, you'll see that there was a very interesting thing that happened there. Um with the SU-122-44. So basically, one or two things is possible why I didn't spot him until I was so close to him. Um, it might have had something to do with the terrain here, about how I was came down. And while I was down in the low terrain and I didn't have direct line of sight on this position, he might have moved from where he was over here to try and shoot the Pershing. I think the more likely th thing is, is that he has a camo net and he hadn't moved and hadn't fired. So um, I was thinking about actually starting a series on, um, on tank view rate, like what, what distance will you spot a certain tank if they have a certain camera rating and you have a certain view range. Um, but unfortunately I do not have a, uh, a demo alt account uh, or, or a secondary PC to do that with, since uh, I think the Watt client doesn't let you launch multiple instances from the same PC. Um, but anyway, getting back to the battle. So that changes a lot of things here. I was planning on wrapping around behind the VK because I figured the Scorpion would have retreated, right? Because uh, he had taken a lot of fire uh, just before this. Um, and right now I am not so much in spotting mode as I am in trying to support this Pershing here behind me. I see this VK advancing towards him, and so I need to play onesie, to, uh, onesie two or twosie onesie with uh, with this VK, right? Um, I'm unfortunately in the middle of a reload. The reload, once again, on the even 90 is really long. Um, it's one of the Achilles heels of it. Its DPM is really low. Its um, its alpha is low. Uh, its penetration is not good. It's it's 
um, yeah, aim time and all that. So um, you really have to maximize, um, be really careful with your shots to make sure that you're getting damage. So uh, because it takes so long to reload. So right now I'm trying to stall for time here, trying to keep this terrain in between the VK and myself so I'm not spotted, right? Getting some decent uh, fire support there from the Pershing behind me and the Panther in the city directly behind me as well. So now I'm loaded. I should be a little bit more aggressive here since my Pershing is lower health. So this is a misplay. This is a misplay by me, right? Now, probably the Pershing would have died anyway, um, but that's not the point. If he had bounced one of the shells from the VK, um, he would not have died if I had been more aggressive. So, but unfortunately he did not bounce this shot, but I kind of creeped around this corner a little too slowly. I was trying to be a little bit too careful. Part of it was is that um, a lot like playing the T-49 where you have the derp gun. Look, I mean, look at look at my dispersion circle. Look, look at this. I'm barely moving and look how big my aim circle is, right? So it's a lot like playing a derp gun when you're playing the even 90. If you want to like peek around cover and have the shot be pretty accurate, or at least way more accurate than it would be, um, people who play the T-49 know that you will like gently creep over so your uh, dispersion circle while moving doesn't bloom like crazy, right? So that's the other reason I was creeping slow. But I wasn't aware that the Pershing had, had lost more hit points, and unfortunately I wasn't able to save him here. And unfortunately, I can't get that uh, final shell into the uh, the VK 3002. And I would not have killed them anyway unless I had set them on fire um, or or like ammo racked them or something because um, or crazy high roll. But I don't even think I can high roll that much. Um, my alpha is not that high. So rather than risk myself to get the last shot in on him, I can't kill him anyway. So I'm gonna retreat, trying to stall, give myself time to reload. You do that a lot in the even 90. You need to, you need to um, always be aware of the, where the enemy is and think to yourself, okay, where can I put myself if you're more in a more combat mode? Secure the kill there on the VK. If you're more in a combat mode and you're fighting enemies directly, you really need to be thinking about your clip potential and your reload time and trying to figure out how to give yourself enough time to reload. So right now I see that the T-71 CMCD is advancing. Um, our Lorraine already has already lost some hit points, so we know that the T-71 has spotted him and that he's shooting at him. So this is going to be some really tricky shots. The Even-90 is not good at shooting at targets at range uh, and shooting at targets at range that are on the move. Um, sniping is not one of these things that the tank is good at. I missed my third shot, but the panther in the city here saves my butt, and he um, and uh, he secures the kill on the T seventy one CMCD. That helps a lot with with us ha having chances to win this game. If we had not killed the CMCD there, um, it would have been pretty tricky to try and win this game. Fortunately, my panther here in the city is is a one shot. I should be moving more aggressively uh, to try and help the panther directly here but um just like in the situation with the pershing i um i i am stalling a little bit too much here um with the scorpion being spotted it might have been a bad thing to move in really aggressively anyway but but watch what happens here so i can potentially kill them with both of my with my complete clip here, right? I want to kill the scorpion first. Now I can't. Now I can't kill both of them, right? Unfortunately. And there is the infamous even 90 gun for you. Um, it is really, really an accurate gun. I was really hoping to kill both of them with that clip. There it was a really poor engagement on my part. Partly it was just because of my, you know, bad aiming. And the other part of it was the even 90s gun was really bad. So once again, trying to stall, give myself time to reload, uh, make the enemy think I'm going that particular direction and coming back, coming back the other direction. 
So they last saw me spotted heading south, so I'm going to come around from this direction and hopefully I'll ca catch them looking in the in the wrong direction here. I do try to get the snapshot off before the T20 gets his turret around, but once again, even 90 is really bad at shooting on the move. I uh, didn't necessarily need to go for a reload there, even though I had only one shell in the clip, because the Scorpion is a one-shot. And I get really lucky here that the Scorpion's reaction is very slow. I should have died there, so I got really lucky there. So doing a juke here. We see him reverse off the back of the slope there. Always good to keep uh, an eye on the enemy in third person and and on the minimap, even if you don't have direct line of sight of them, to see what their intentions are about where they're moving. So we relocate here, back to where we were at the beginning of the game. And we are able to safely secure the kill here. And we spot the S1 here. Amazingly, he doesn't spot us there right away. And then unfortunately, that was a really poor uh, circumstance and timing because I went for a reload after I had killed the Scorpion because I wasn't expecting to engage the S1 so soon. And now and now we're in a really tricky situation here because the, the S1 is a really mobile tank destroyer and the even 90 is not an agile tank it really struggles to cir circle more mobile tanks so i'm gonna try and track him here i loaded he because you can pen the back of, of swedish tank destroyers with he even the even 90s crappy he use one of my shells to um one of my shells to track him to give myself time And I once again uh, retreat to give myself time to uh, to uh, to reload here. The Panther two on my team saying you could have looped him. It's possible, but you saw in the first part of the engagement here he didn't really have trouble traversing his tank to keep up with uh, with me trying to circle him. So I didn't want to take that risk. Plus, there's also a risk of uh, in a in a tank that's so light like the even ninety. Um, if you get behind the tank destroyer, um, he might be able to ram you or climb over the top of you. Um, that's happened to me uh, several times in the even 90, actually. Even though I've gotten directly behind the tank destroyer, they, they reverse and their tank is so much bigger than mine and has better horsepower and the hitboxes are different that he's just able to climb on top of you. All right, so going back to the tactical situation here. Right. Uh, pardon me there. I had to mute my mic. <laughs> I'm struggling with uh, some uh, congestion here. Hopefully it's not a, another, a, uh, another winter cold, so, but uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. Now uh, back to the game. So um, I wanted to disengage from the S1 to give myself time to reload and not allow him to ram me or circle, uh, be able to get his gun on me, right? But also... I did not want to give the S1 time to um, retreat to a position uh, unspotted and me not knowing where he went, right? Because um, Swedish tank destroyers are really tricky to find. Uh, they have really good camo rating and they're really mobile. So, And I don't have a lot of time left in the game to kill this guy before the battle's over. If you look at the time clock on that, it's only two and a half minutes left in the game. So I wanted to reacquire, re-spot this guy, um, and luckily I spot him just in time here um, before uh, he gets in cover behind that little knoll in the bushes there in the corner of the map. Um, I did wait too long to try and re-spot him and reacquire him, so I got really lucky here. Did the right thing, I just didn't do it quick enough. So now that we know where he is, um, we have a have. A, an opportunity to try and, and take him out before the battle's over. So, so this is going to be a really tricky engagement. He has really good traverse, and I don't have a lot of um, sideways room, right? Like this way. So there's these bushes right here that you can use to spot if the tank is further back away from the null. 
So I'm going to peek here. Go back into the position that I was looking at. So he's looking. I'm worried about him blind firing since he knows that he's spotted there. And the the horn on the clock is is telling me that I need to hurry up. So luckily he turned his hole there. Uh, did not actually shoot, shoot him in uh, quick enough there, but we do get a shot off in time. Now he knows that I'm on this side. So um, losing a little psychology here. He's expecting me to be on that side of the rock, so I'm going to try and, and... There we go, he did turn. He used his repair kit. And I retrack him there just in time before his gun gets around. Um, was more concerned about him killing me than actually me trying to get the kill on him. So uh, we know that he got tracked and that um, and that uh, he's used his repair kit, right? That's really important to know here uh, about how the engagement's going to come up here later. So I did get respotted. Once again, another psychology thing here. I, I faint like I want to peek this side of the uh, again. So you got to use getting spotted to your advantage sometimes. Uh, a lot of players are the wiser. They know about the double jukes or triple jukes. Um, um, but, you know, it still works from time to time. So it's worth trying. So when you're spotted, you got to act like you're going a certain direction um, or want to peek a certain side of hard cover. So I was spotted here. Um, so I was like doing the puppy shuffle back and forth right here, right? Trying to make him think that I wanted to peek this as soon as I went unspotted. But then as soon as I did get unspotted, I come back over here to this side, right? So to give me a better chance since he might be looking in this direction, right? And I only have two shells in my clip and, and not three. So he is looking that direction. Uh, unfortunately, my aim time is is not very good. Uh, I don't have an awesome angle, not like I did before. I only have 40 seconds, so I decide I decide he's not going to turn. He's going left and right, left and right. He's not going to give me a good angle to shoot at his side. I get him tracked, and right now this is where I know I have the game because he had already used his repair kit before when I tracked him before. Luckily, just squeeze the shot off just as his tracks automatically repair. And uh, and we win the game in the final few seconds of the battle. Um, didn't have to shoot a lot of my premium rounds. I felt obligated not to since I was top tier. <laughs> and we even shot our HE clip there in the battle. Um, so, looking back and reviewing the battle here... Um, uh, I made several uh, tactical misplays in this battle, but overall, um, I think this is a good example of how to balance um, personal damage and spotting and assistance damage, or as some people like to call it, peasant damage, um, the, so that you can win the battle. Um, a lot of times people will get into the mindset of getting very one-dimensional, like they'll try to just pass a scout through the entire battle or most of the battle. Um, that will help your team somewhat, depending on the map. But you also need to be willing to be um, multi-dimensional, being willing to take on more roles than just one. Obviously, um, it's very difficult to do both at the same time. Um, um, but even switching back and forth between them during the battle will help you win the game. So. Um, so the even 90, I think it's a pretty uh, mean tank. Definitely recommend it if you don't have it in your garage. <sighs> Sorry, still having trouble with congestion. Had to mute the mic there. Um, the um, so if you don't have it, um, and it if it comes up on the advent calendar this year. Definitely worth getting. I wouldn't say it's a super competitive tank. It's not very. It's not as consistent as some of the other uh, scout tanks. Um, but you can have really, really funny, funny games, even if they're good games. Or you can have really huge games as far as assistance um, damage, just because it has really good camo rating and good view range. So uh, it's a sneaky little guy. The gun isn't very reliable, so I'd highly recommend keeping a lot of premium loaded. Um, this is one. So um, this is one of the tanks that 
um, is very interesting because, and I like this tank because it's very unique. Um, I don't like the fact that over the years we're gaming keep releasing tanks and tank lines that um, and premium tanks that are more or less they perform the same role on the battlefield. Um, um, I, I'm a pretty big fan of unique tanks, even if they're average. Um, I, uh, I like to have variety. Um, but anyway, so this is one of the unique tanks as far as um, equipment loadouts. If you guys are curious about, uh, whoa, <laughs> let's see if I can use third person. Nope, can't use third person. Um, the even 90 has a viable option for equipment loadouts. Um, so you can use like, uh, I would recommend using coded optics no matter what. Um, and I would recommend using, um, vents or I, I can't remember if the even 90 use, can use vert stabs or not. I, I believe it can. So there's a definitely an argument for using vert stabs, but I generally use, um, coded optics and vents no matter what, but you can also use coded optics, vents, uh, binoculars. Put it up, fix uh, vents camo net, which is, I believe, my current loadout in this, um, in this particular battle, and you can also use coded optics vents vert stabs, if you want the gun to be more reliable, um, and then you can change out the vents for vert stabs and have that third uh, equipment slot be, um, be binox or camo net as well. So there's like, at least four or five viable equipment loadouts that you can use on this tank just because it's it's uh, kind of flexible in that particular so you can kind of tailor it a little bit to your particular play style which is really nice so um but before i end up rambling too much longer i'll wrap up the video here i've already been talking for quite a while so i want to thank you guys for watching um i'm gonna try and record another even 90 video that i had on ruinberg right after this um, probably won't do commentary on that one go though, so you guys won't have to listen to me ramble for so long. <laughs> um, I hope you guys have a good rest of your week, um, and thank you so much for watching. Happy hunting, and take care.